Hey everybody, Mike Miller with the Herald Times. Cheese boy Jeremy Price, now he's the IU basketball columnist. We're coming to you from the Kohl's Center in Madison. This cheese is really strong. This cheese has been sitting out for God knows how long, but we figured we'd... Hours. I gotta get the pepper jack away from this. is... Alright. Enough of... Yeah, we were gonna start... That was real close to my face, and that was real offensive, actually. It was, whew, boy, that is, uh, that is cheese that has been sitting out for a good solid day. Five hours or whatever. It was, that was cheese. Might have been Clark Kellogg's cheese. We don't know. Clark Kellogg's was at the table here. Yeah. Uh, Clark, you got to put your cheese away, man. you got to put that in the fridge when you're done with it. Anyway, coming to you after a 65-60 uh, Wisconsin win over Indiana, 15th straight Wisconsin win over Indiana in this building. Uh, we started with the cheese to say... Indiana served this game up on a platter for Wisconsin. More or less. And, and, and here's here's... You know, all things considered, Indiana did play pretty well, uh, given the fact that they've lost some guys, which we've covered ad nauseum. Yes. Um, but still, uh, when you, there's really a, a couple real discrepancies in this game. Free throws are one, and turnovers are yet again another. Uh, points off turnovers. Uh, both teams committed basically the same amount. Uh, Indiana had 15, Wisconsin had 13. Wisconsin scored, what, uh, 16 off of those. Indiana scored six. Yeah. So that's not good, especially in a game where you know you're coming up here, you know that fouls, just as you saw last year, fouls are going to be an issue. Getting to the free lines, free throw line is going to be an issue. Uh, you, you cannot, absolutely cannot commit those kind of turnovers, and we've seen it time and time again, saw it again today. Right. It's, it's not the first time we've discussed turnovers this year, but it is, it is an even bigger thing against Wisconsin than most teams for a couple of reasons. Part, part of it's the pace of play. Part of it is Wisconsin such a good defensive team already to just give away possessions. And then to give away possessions that produce points for Wisconsin is just a double-edged sword if you're Indiana. And it was it was really the biggest thing that I thought was the difference. If, you, if Indiana could cut those turnovers from 15 to, say, 10 mm-hmm. and cut those points off turnovers from 16 to 8, I mean, I, I think then we're probably looking at Indiana having a shot to win the game somewhere in the final two minutes today instead of trying to play catch-up from just, you know, four, six. It was just kind of bouncing back there, four, six points, eight points, four, six points, whatever. I think they got within three there with 1.3 seconds left. That was as close as it got. But um, they were within three on a couple other occasions. But yeah. anyway, just turnovers, just uh, not the only reason Indiana lost today, but sort of the seedy underbelly, I guess, of, of what – led to Indiana losing today, among a few other things. Yeah, the um, you know offense was at times uh, lacking, disjointed, whatever you want to say. It. Although Wisconsin, too, I think, it, to, to give Indiana some credit, this is probably the most impressive defensive performance we've seen from them, all things considered, this Big Ten season. Uh, I, I thought they applied some nice pressure in the half court. They, they forced some bad shots. They had Vito Brown missing uh, seven of his eight shots, which, uh, man, he was not very good today. He was helping out the Hoosiers today. Yeah. Um, but in all seriousness, I, I do think it was a, a rather connected effort, a sustained aggression we saw uh, in the half court from Indiana, and I think that was, uh, as much as we've lamented their play on that end of the court, uh, that was at least one encouraging development from this. Yeah, if there's one thing you can say about the defense today, it was aggressive, and that's something we've long sort of complained about. You know, We know that Indiana's got some flaws defensively from it, whether it's the lineups they play, whether it's the shifting between man and zone or, or just the porous zone defense they play or whatever the case may be. But if you actually play defense with some conviction, which they finally did today, yeah. it's not an awful defensive team. They may not be a great defensive team, but they should be a competitive defensive team. And what we saw today was sort of uh, not unlike what we saw against Michigan State a couple of weeks ago, where when this team comes out with enough passion, energy, conviction, then it's capable of hanging in there even in a situation where they're clearly outmanned and, and underdogs. I mean, I think coming into today, I'm not sure many people gave Indiana a chance of being within single digits, let alone winning this game. Sure. So uh, to come in here and basically this was a game that was pretty much up for grabs throughout, uh, right up to the final minute. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really one of the, I think, you know, the biggest indictment of maybe where some of the things stand with this team this season, you know, especially defensively, is I just never understood with the personnel that they have uh, why they would be so just disconnected and, and poor, consistently poor defensively. I mean, and you, passive. It, exactly. Exactly. There's no good reason for it. And so much of defense, too, it really is mindset. It's really being able to take that uh, approach to that end of the court. Um, and, and for whatever reason, they just haven't done it this year. And 
really I give a lot of credit to the signs on the sideline today. There's uh, a couple X's that were thrown out there, really telling them to buckle down. But no, it's it just it really I, I, people would ask why are they? So, I don't I don't have answers. I never had answers for why this team struggled so much defensively. And as we saw today, the capacity's there. There's no doubt about it. And we saw it today. And you know, obviously with this team, the big one of the biggest hurdles they've yet to to really cross is sustaining things, whether on either end of the floor. I mean, we talk about how you know, prolific they can be offensively, but still, you know. There's a lot of standing around. There's just a lot of, I mean, you, you look at Josh Newkirk and Robert Johnson, there's just a lot of shakiness with the ball, uh, you know, just getting guys set, getting plays started, uh, you know, that whole type of thing. It's just been sustaining that uh, consistency or whatever. I mean, it's just not been there. And today, to their credit, defensively it was. Um, offensively, though, you know, you're clearly missing some things. But Yeah, off- offensively, it's not a surprise. I mean, if you look at it here, three of the last four games – you scored 60 against Michigan, you scored 55 against Northwestern, and you scored 60 here today. Those are the three, I believe those are the three lowest scoring games yeah. of the season. Well, no James Blackman, no OG Ananobi, um, no surprise, really, at, at this point that that's the case. I guess the, the good news of that, to, to spin this forward, is it appears as though James Blackman may be returning sooner than later. And for Indiana, I, I'm sure they hope that that means Thursday against Purdue. Yeah, uh, w- without totally just throwing a guess out there. Well, I'll just do that anyway. Uh, I would imagine he's. he's I, I would probably say it's pretty likely. The, the odds are at least in the favor of getting Blackman you back on the court. Yeah, it, it kind of followed the same template uh, as Juwan Morgan, who dressed for uh, one of these games recently. Didn't play, but dressed. Mm-hmm. Went through uh, you know the pregame routine. Got shots up, stretched. Um, and that's what Blackman did today. Went through the whole pregame stuff. Obviously, as you noted, uh, wasn't uh, wasn't padded up. Wasn't wearing his usual uh, padding that he wears along his legs. But um, just to, he was moving around fine. I mean, he was. He looked okay. He looked yeah. fine. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, I mean, he looked fine. And obviously, getting him back, and you got what four days now to uh, to kind of get him back and get him in the swing of things. It doesn't sound like anything was too too serious. He hasn't practiced then again. He hasn't practiced since Michigan. But again, again there was time. no there was no evidence of any kind of brace on the knee no. or ankle or anything like that. I mean, there was no tape job or anything like that. That, that suggested any kind of specificity as to what the nature of the injury is. So. Speaking of injuries, uh, Juwan Morgan, I think today too. You know, with that, with that bad foot. I mean, I saw him walking out of the building today with the the walking boot on his left foot. I mean, he's clearly still hobbled at times, and I think it's pretty noticeable just watching him uh, running up and down the court at, at, at different moments. But uh, I thought he really brought it, especially on, on, on the glass. And I think in those final eight minutes of the first half today, when Indiana was really able to swing back and. Uh, keep it close. I think that he was a big reason for that, and um, that's that's an encouraging sign too. I think today, just if you want to look at the positive side of things, you saw a lot of fight today. You saw some mm-hmm. toughness. You saw they didn't they didn't wilt or, or buckle away. Um, you know when when there were certain moments when they could have. Uh, but I, I thought Juwan Morgan today was pretty emblematic of just the effort in general. Obviously far from 100, uh, percent but he was all over the glass. He was really playing strong, especially early. Yeah, I thought. Uh Juwan Morgan and Deron Davis are really the two guys that sort of leading the charge on that front right now because they're clearly not 100%. You, you see both guys at various points either grimacing in pain or limping or grabbing a foot, an ankle, or whatever. Uh, you know, guys that clearly aren't at 100%, but those were the guys that were really the difference makers today. I thought those guys were key, what they did against uh, Hayes and Happ, and, you know, Ethan Happ still had his usual... Uh, a great game against Indiana, which is just kind of par for the course at this point. Uh, but those two guys really solidified Indiana and gave them some big minutes when needed. I don't, I don't think Deron Davis came in until about midway through the second half, uh, which not coincidentally seemed to be where Indiana sort of regained its footing a little bit, and he played through some foul trouble in the first half to, to sort of aid the cause. So I think both those guys are big, and if you can, sometimes you just need to build off guys like that that have that battle mentality to play through injuries and if you can kind of spread that mentality to the guys who are healthy then it turns out all the better yep we'll see uh, what happens thursday obviously even at full strength uh if indiana's a full strength i'm not sure produce a great matchup for this yeah. indiana team but obviously we'll see what the situation is with blackman getting into thursday assembly hall always helps yeah that there's no doubt about it that'd be a huge one for indiana if they could pull that one out we'll uh, we'll preview it wednesday we'll talk a little bit more about the game in the coming days until then i just i have to get away from the cheese i still <laughs> smell the cheese and it is bad do not bring that any closer to J- jeremy please put the cheese away all right we're running from the cheese see okay. you guys